Hi guys, welcome back to another long overdue Mr. Pollock biology video. This time we're going to be looking at a bit more biochemistry. And the topic I've chosen for this comeback video is uh, the structure of DNA, which is quite a popular, popular little topic that's been requested. So here's our objectives. We're going to describe the structure of a nucleotide and we're going to understand complementary base pairing. So let's dive in and talk straight away about what DNA is. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, to give it its full title, and we call it a double-stranded polynucleotide. Um, so what does that mean? Well, a, a polynucleotide is a large polymer that's made up of many, many, many individual monomers that in this case are these things called nucleotides. And these are formed, these polynucleotides are formed through condensation reactions, much like many other large biochemicals that you study at this level. And we find DNA in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells or in the nuclear region of prokaryotes. And the function of DNA is to code for polypeptides. It is the universal language that determines which proteins our cells build during protein synthesis, which will be another video. But for the time being, let's look at those building blocks of DNA. Let's look at a nucleotide. Here's one here. It looks quite complicated, but we're going to break it down because it's essentially only made up of three bits. We've got a pentose sugar, which in the case of DNA is called deoxyribose, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid. We have a phosphate group, which is just over here. And then we have this guy, which is a nitrogenous base. And there are four different nitrogenous bases that can be found in a DNA nucleotide and we'll have a look at those in just a second. That whole formula, that whole horrible chemical looking thing is far too complicated for us. We're going to simplify that right down. So this is what we look at as a, as a nucleotide. We've got three simple shapes representing the three different parts of the nucleotide. The phosphate, the deoxyribose sugar, and the nitrogenous base. So that's a mononucleotide or a nucleotide, but how do they undergo a reaction that forms the polynucleotide, the large polymer, which will be DNA. Well, let's take two of these guys together. Let's take two nucleotides and place them side by side. And they're going to undergo a condensation reaction, which brings them together. The bond forms just here. Because this is a condensation reaction, we get an additional product in addition to the, the dinucleotide we've created here. We get a molecule of water. So one molecule of water is produced for every two nucleotides that condense together. And that new bond that's formed, well, that's a phosphodiester bond. And it's a really strong bond that holds the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA molecule together. So that's the reaction. Now, because this is a condensation reaction, obviously the reverse of that is a hydrolysis, which can, uh, can be done as well. But we don't really have to worry about that now. What we do have to worry about is the four different bases that can be found in these nucleotides. So let's have a look at those now. The first two I'm going to talk about are adenine, which is given the letter A, and guanine, which is given the letter G. Now, because these have a double ring structure, these are categorized separately. These are called purines. So bases which have a double ring structure, these are known as purines. The other two bases, thymine, and cytosine, they only have a single ring structure, and they're called pyrimidines. Now, purines always bond with pyrimidines, and, and uh, <laughs> the, the way this kind of works out is adenine always bonds with thymine, and guanine always bonds with cytosine. There's never any adenine-cytosine action, nor is there ever any thymine-guanine action. There's no adenine on guanine action, nor is there any thymine on cytosine action. It's always the purine base adenine pairing with the pyrimidine base thymine, and you get two hydrogen bonds formed there. So A and T is two. And then the other option is the purine base guanine pairing with the pyrimidine base cytosine, in which case you get three hydrogen bonds formed. So G and C gives three hydrogen bonds. And these bonds, they're going to hold together the two opposite strands of the DNA molecule. Remember, it's a double-stranded polynucleotide, so you've got two strands that are held together 
And these hydrogen bonds, we know that these guys are kind of weak on their own, but because there are loads of them and loads of them and loads of them together, that combined strength holds the two strands uh, in location. So an interesting spin the examiner can give on this is a base calculation. They can tell you that 24% or any other percentage of the bases in DNA are thymine and ask you to work out any of the other bases. And the logic is like this. Well, we've got 24% thymine. Now, adenine is complementary to thymine, so they must be equal. So that's 24 and 24 gives 48% of the DNA, we already know, which means the remaining 52% must be equal parts guanine and cytosine. So all we do is we divide that number by 2, and therefore we can deduce that if 24% of thymine, then 26% must be cytosine. So we said that DNA is double-stranded. Let's look at the structure. So here we go. This is quite complicated. We've already talked about the, uh, the hydrogen bonding here, but I want to draw your attention to this word anti-parallel. So the two strands, they run in opposite directions to one another. And if you look very carefully, you can see that on the left-hand strand, uh, we have a phosphate group at the top of that strand, where there isn't one on the right-hand strand. So that means that they're inverted, they're running in opposite directions, and we give them specific names. So the end of the DNA strand where the phosphate group is, we give this designation 5 prime. We call that the 5 prime end. The three prime end is the end of the DNA strand that does not have the phosphate group on. So here we have two strands of DNA that are joined together through a complementary base pairing. And they run, one runs five prime to three prime, the other one runs three prime to five prime. They're running in opposite directions. And the word we use to describe that is anti-parallel. So let's summarize this then, that's everything. So we can say that DNA is a polynucleotide and it's formed through the condensation of many nucleotides. That nucleotide is made up of a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, and one of those four nitrogenous bases. The sugar phosphate backbone is held together by really strong phosphodiester bonds that were formed as a result of the condensation reaction. Those two strands of the double helix, that double-stranded structure of DNA, are held together by hydrogen bonds that form between the complementary base pairs. And the two kinds of complementary base pairs we have are adenine forming two hydrogen bonds with thymine. So remember, A and T makes two. And then finally, cytosine forming three bonds, three hydrogen bonds with guanine. So G and C makes three. That's everything on DNA structure for you for the time being, guys. I'll come back with more videos shortly, but for the time being, thank you very much for watching, and please do like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.